Right guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Baz. Can you believe it's been nearly five months since we started the Chronicles? Right, so, who's that mom that's just pulling up there now? A little load of trailer coming in for something. Anyway, so it's been nearly five months since we started the Chronicles and um, it seems to be doing all right so far, shall we say. This is the week before Christmas, so we have got a lot to do this week, so we'll try and get a good bit of footage for you. We've got um, we've got quite a bit of work to do in Wales, which I probably won't be able to go to. We have a quarry in Wales. I'm going to have to send the work lads down, and I've got two lads off all week. So uh, I'm going to struggle getting everything done. We have got lads working all over Christmas, but I'm going to try and have a week off because I'm feeling a little bit burnt out. And uh, now and again, you've got to have a bit of a rest, you know what I'm saying? But we will do... We will do an episode on Christmas Day, so if you guys that are really into Welder Faber, there will be one out on Christmas Day, it will be a, probably a two hour special. Um, I know it's not for everyone doing it something on Christmas Day, but you can always watch it on Boxing Day, can't you? Or any other day over Christmas, should we say. Anyway, let's have a look what's going on with this trailer here now. So, lad, what's happening with this? Oh, is it snapped? Yeah, it's snapped, yeah. Right. So let's just drop the ramp. So for the viewers, this is a flip ramp trailer, slide and flip ramp trailer. And this here is like a stabiliser to send the flip ramp out as it comes down. Oh, it's snapped. Yeah. Right, so that'll really want to be like a 20, probably a 22 mil thread. It'll want to be a 12.9 that. Has that been repaired before? Is it this one or the other one? I can't remember if there's one or two in that video. The other one's completely well getting in. Is it? I think so, yeah. Right, well, let's just drop the ramps down. That's a little bit bent as well. It won't be helping. So that's a little bit bent, that tube. So, yeah, this is a Monday, the start of a week. We have got a unit in the workshop at the moment that's uh, having a little bit of a near side front step repair might as well have a quick look at it before we start this trailer right so it looks like this near side front corner's had a bit of a bang did it break off Paul? yeah it yes. snap, snapped, snapped off snapped in about three or four places right so the aluminium step will bolt to a bracket that goes there can you see that's been snapped off so Paul's just rebuilding that at the moment just put in uh, aluminium wire into the MIG. Callum's off on holiday this week, he usually does all the alley welding, but so we'll jump over to the MIG on that one. And somebody has crushed a pump. Now then this morning, that was completely flattened, weren't it Luke? Yeah. That was flattened like that. So Luke's just cut it apart. Rebu it's not great. Rebuilding the frame, yeah, it's not great. Just, just get it back somewhat lighter. It'll be right, and then we'll have a look at this trailer outside. Then we're gonna to have to put a live head on that 1700. Because that 1700 is going today or tomorrow. Screener, that'll show you shortly. Right, let's get these ramps down. Always stay well clear of ramps whenever they're coming down. So, can you see how that's pushing that one out now? That stabiliser, it's all the other side. Well, sorry, I'll just get an hammer and knock it out. Good. Good down that. Right, hang fire there, I'll get it with a forklift. Let's take weight a bit again, sir. Thank you. 
Right, so as you can see here, it's that like a little uh, cantilever, isn't it, to let it come back on itself, like a little cam if you will, comes round. So this one has completely snapped off. Oh, see what you mean, so it's been bent, hasn't it? Yeah. So it'll have been in that position. That's a good, yeah, exactly yeah. how it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So really, then that, that's been too long. If anything, wonder if the threads have gone in that a bit. So I'll whip that off. I'll whip that off. We've got the length there from that one. So as long as it's exactly the same length as that, this side, compared to this side, it'll be alright. So I'll just get some, uh, some spanners out, we'll get that out. So I've just got a 16 millibolt here, so. 24 million right, so in that case Where are you going today, sir? Oh no, she only gave me this. Give me this job and she said she's going to Well, where are we going? I don't know, she said, well, she did have this. Oh, there you go. Right, so I'd say. Well, you got a good. No, we got that much thread in it, so them threads do look a bit worn, don't they? Yeah, they definitely worn them threads. So what we'll have to do, we have to cut that off. See if we've got any threaded bar that size. Really, it could do to be 12.9 that because it'll uh, needs to be strong, high tensile. But I don't know what we've got in stock. It looks like about a 20, 22 mil thread that. So we'll see what we got in uh, the stock director. Other than that, we'll just make it that length. Well, the bit of solid barring like this side's been done. All right, here we will sort it now. So we'll just check what measurement uh, we've got before the break. So we've got 110 mil, sir. Yeah, around 110 mil to the start of the eye. Uh, so let's just see if we've got some thready bar first for that. Eh? Right, so let's see, we're an M22 and M24. That. That's M22, so it's not M22. M24. Right, so. I need an M24. Some 10.9, some 8.8. That'll work. But what I can do is wind that in into the tube, cut it off at 110, weld that eye on it. Well, I could just weld that eye on there. Don't only weld the eye on. And just wind that in. That'll be bang on. Nice easy fix. As you'll see. Right, so I'm just checking how much thread we've actually got in there. So I put my finger in. I'm at the end of the thread there now. All right. So we got 50 mil of thread. So we've got 50 mil of thread. We've got 110 to the end. All right, so I want to be cutting that at 160, don't I? Put that at 160, wind it in 50 mil, weld my eye on there, weld that eye onto that, happy days. We're doing it bam. First of all, I'm going to cut the eye off.
150 mil. That's red, don't we? So, mang that in there. There, 150. Little mark. to do now is give that a good prep hold that to that put it back on job done sink into yeah and what we'll do is uh, we'll roll it with a seven all one eight like I always do for spread in fact these are uh, Oh yeah, they're 7018. Back, back, don't open them yet though, so we'll just use, we'll use a 4 milli. Right, so I'll just come to use my mask. And again, once again, the batteries have gone flat. Right, so... Is anybody else having problems with the double XI? I don't know why, but the batteries keep going flat. I should have some somewhere in here. This is like my new bit, so oh, there we go. Hang on. Might as well uh, put a new lens in it while we're at it. So yeah, I don't know why they keep going flat, but they keep going flat. Painful sometimes, just lasting a couple of months at a time. So well, dead easy to change the batteries in a mask. Yeah, pull out, push in, back up, same on the other side. Now we're running, yeah. I will change the uh, 
the lens at the same time. New lenses. is that easy to change look how look in that just slides down in there clicks in so I'm going to put a tack on it and wherever you put the tack it'll pull but if I put a tack there it'll pull up like that yeah so we'll have to just give it a knock back so I'm going to leave a nice little gap there So because we because we had that gap before we've gone right into the center and all the way around a couple of times yeah so we'll just flush that off now that goes Now a good strong weld on there now. Yeah. Well, we want that to be one ten. Uh, that should be all right. All right, put that bolt back in there now. It should be back on. Try that side. We'll just loosen that a little touch. 
One sec. Might have just gripped all of it a little bit that. That's the one, eh, lad? Second down. Second down to his line. Yeah, yeah. Should be bang on though, that now. That pump don't look, yeah? Happy? I'm happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Are you putting a machine on round here or not? No, no, no. I've got one pick one up, don't worry. I'm going to give me a ring about off it. Alright, mate. Right, Sound. Right, Luke. Pump done. Pump done. So I think we'll make a start on this live head, yeah? It's going to take two machines to lift it. Right, that's quite a bit of weight, isn't it? We've got two machines here. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go and take a look. Okay, this is the live head off the 1700 that we need to put back on because we've sold the machine. Luke, I'd start by taking this pallet off, get all this off, out of the way, get them shoots off, put these springs back in. You see how some springs have come out, director. Alright, so this does actually just lift off the frame, this box. Alright, lifts off that frame. So lift it up, put the springs back in wherever they're missing all round. And we'll have to make some pins if we can't find any, yeah? So... 40 mil... 40 mil wire... Oh, it's 150, that. We'll have to see what the, the bracket thickness is on the machine. So, 40 mil pins, and whatever size that they are in the end of the ram. Hopefully, they'll be on the machine somewhere, but... Probably not. 25 mil. We might have to make four pins, yeah? We'll start by getting uh, getting it all off. Get it next to the machine, which is at the other side of the crushing shed. And you will need two uh, two machines to lift this because it's that heavy. Or if you had a 35 tonne of that, I'd lift it. But we've only got two 13 tonnes in yard, so that's what we'll have to do to uh, put it on. All right. I've just got to nip out of somewhere. We'll be back in 20 minutes. All right. The pins will be on the machine somewhere. Let's look down the other side. The pins I'm looking for are uh, gonna go in them hanger bracket there, can you see? On the on the they really should have been put back into the hangers when they were when the live air was taken off originally. There's no boxes on the machine. We'll have to fold that handrail up as well. We'll fold that handrail up for transport. It's looking like we're going to have to make the pins. On director, there's our fuel tanker. That comes in here a couple of times a week. That just tells you how much fuel we're going through. Right, so what I'm going to do, we're going to move this machine forward away from the fence. We'll pick the live head up with this little 13 tonner and another 13 tonner. And we'll basically get it at the back end of the machine, then lift it up and track the machine back underneath the live head and drop it down. Uh, because these 13 tonners, I'll be honest with you, they'll struggle picking it up. 
as you'll see in a minute. So we'll uh, tie this up. The one thing I don't like about these is when you start them up, they start up on full revs. You'd have thought it'd be on low revs now, wouldn't you? But it won't be when it fires. to track the live head round to here, lift it up, track the machine back under, so I'll just, uh, I'll just move that truck out of the way, then we'll go and get it with the machine. That's in position now, all need is four pins, as you can see where it locates. I'm just going to tape measure now, and, uh, measure them brackets up, see if we've got any solid bar in the workshop. Make a couple of pins for it. There's a few bolts missing as well, if you see here. We'll walk around here, there's some bolts missing out of the frame. So we'll have to bolt all this down. 
Oh, that should be button fastened down that frame. There's only a couple of bolts holding it on. So, uh, so yeah, pretty straightforward. I could have opened it up with uh, the conveyors out, but I decided not to it. Right, Luke, so we need a couple of uh, 16 milli bolts to fasten this frame down, yeah? You see these holes where they're missing? Yeah, yeah. Right, and we've got a 40 mil pin. If we do it by 200. Yeah. Right, or if we do it 250 and drill and all, well, the washer on one end, yeah. drill and all, and uh, put a split pin in it, yeah? That's two pins for that side. Just measure the other side up what size you need to be. Yeah. Twenty-five mil. Twenty-five mil. Yeah. Bye. Run by 220. All right. Wash your welding on. Yeah, same again. So four pins. If there's no material, yeah. let me know soon as we're going to go and get some. Yeah. All right. All right, so this is the truck that Paul's just repaired. Aaron's going to put it back together for us. Just jump on that step, Aaron, will you? Let me see how strong it is, that. Yeah, that'll do. Right. So uh, I don't know how, how it got damaged, I think it's clipped something somewhere. But so Paul's alley welded it and put an extra plate on it. So Aaron will just build this front corner back up now before it goes out. Alright, look at this the red light. Look at the old one. The old one has been clipped up and damaged. The yeah, yeah, so it's brand new red lighting. Yeah. Obviously, I think it's cracked out, so it's all just leaking all the yeah, so um, yeah. how long will that take you? Probably about half hour. If half that. hour? Yeah, it's just because they're getting headlighting, all yeah. plastics back on. So, uh, good to go. Alright, mate, I'll leave you with that. Yeah, all right. we'll crack See on. Right, yeah. director, we're going to go over to Bolton in a minute. It's going to be a bad day about looking at weather, innit? So, Paul's pulled that unit out, letting Aaron put it back together. And he's just uh, repairing a sheet arm on the back end. Now, this is an ejector trailer. And what happens is they've got sheet arms at both sides that flip right over like that to the centre. Right? And here, this is a back end one. It's obviously a bit caught somewhere, damaged somewhere along the line. So that just wants to be flat pole, yeah? Straight? Yeah. Where is it? Well, that, well it snapped there. That was like that. That's how it was when I took it off, but you see it. Replace there. that whole box then, yeah? It's all bent, but it's been repaired loads of times. Right. And make, make a good job of it then, mm. a good job of it. Whoever's bodged it last time, eh? Well, I was thinking if, put, up, if we've got some of that in, go for yeah. that size. Beef yeah, it, 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 yeah, it would. Well. It's it, funny. It. You see there? You've got a bit of box into another bit of two box, two box. different sizes. Right, so just try and beef it up a bit. If we haven't, Put like a plate over the corners. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just to stiffen it up a bit on the corners. All right. But we're going to go and fit some teeth on a 20 ton excavator for Dave Finch, Finchy. And uh, yeah, I'll show you when we get there. In a bit. Right, so I'm just going to get the, uh, the teeth. So here we've got 30 ton rock teeth, 30 ton teeth, these are 20 ton teeth, and they're 13 ton teeth. They're the pins and locks for 20 ton teeth. So we'll just need six of them. All right, so I'll bang some of these in, man.
Right, so here we've got a 20 ton cat. Just going to change these six teeth. Has that one just come off, Dave? Yeah. He's some boy up there. Let me tell you now, he's some boy up there. When we talk about decent drivers, you'll get to know more as the chronicles go on, yeah? Just flip that round, Dave. Show them that tooth. Just a little bit too, just a little bit too far that son, just a little bit too far. Hey. Well, I'm telling you, I like to see them when they're just, just, just before that point. <laughs> right, this one here, that'll be all right. Just knock it back round. So you're gonna see a fast tooth change here now. Well, up a touch. I'll do, out of there. Good big punch. So we change all the locks on a tooth, tooth replacement. These are your little locks. Change all the locks. All the adapter out. the adapter, two form, pin in, turn whenever you want. And then what we'll do, we'll lower it down a little bit in the bucket, so you get a good swing on it with hammer. This tooth here, that one there, shall we say, that's how I like to see them, just when they're about to go like that. Obviously that one's too far gone. But that's when we want to be changing them when we get to that stage. Yeah, perfect stage. Along with the bucket, a touch, Dave. Just a touch. I'm just looking at my hand. Make sure your pins lined up with a lock.
You're better than Dave, you're not the second one, mate. Here we get shots of him. Oh, let's, have a, let's have a little chat with Dave. Yeah, that's oh, what are you telling me? Hey! Have you got GPS on this? Oh, yes. I thought, I thought you were a good driver. I don't need all that I shit anyway. Say, what like. do you need GPS for? Look at that direction. Just to explain what GPS is to you. There you are. Shows you. You can set your levels. Tells you what level to do. So if I put that up for the. So you can set, say if you want to dig See? six inches so down. If I'm leveling that stone like that, there you are. Shows you. And all you do is pull one lever, is it? Well, you can do, but it needs calibrating at the moment. Is it? Look at that, aren't you? And that'll be what you set it to dig there, will it? So that won't dig any lower? Yeah. I'm doing that. But if you, you can put it on auto yeah. and it'll do it itself, but yeah. it's a bit slower like. Yeah, I'm going to say it's a lot slower, isn't it? Yeah. Really, a lot slower. Yeah. But it's fun. all right for you, you new boys, isn't it, you know? My old boys. Yeah. I, will, I, will, I won't see you being one of these, son. Well, no, you're too good with the army, you see, you aren't you? You're too much money, you man. Too, too much money? Eh? There's never no all such thing as too much money. Leaves all day. Yeah, we do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better a new sat in your van pulling your plug all day. Sat in the machine pulling levers all day. Yeah. It's like these truck drivers, yeah. you know what I mean? They're on too much money as well. Yeah, it's like the truck driver oh, turning yeah. the steering wheel all day. Oh, the steering wheel attendant. That's the one. That's, That's the fella. The yeah. That's the one. Is everything else all right with this? Yeah. 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 Did a parent like, and it's like brand new again. Why you've been scratching it? It's these low loader drivers again. You did mention <laughs> wagons, wagons. Oh, look it? at that back end now, right? Did you see if it's got any scratches on it? A little bit. Low loader drivers, that. Swinging down our bucket. Is it as well? Yeah. Not mention any name, but the fella's gone now who did it. He will grease it. This mom will grease it, won't you? Oh, yes. You won't hear any squeak from this machine? I mean, Really, what we could all do with is a is an electric grease gun. You know what I mean? Just to save the arms. Mm. I don't think Fox will stretch to that. In fact, I don't know. Maybe, maybe for the operators that have been here, say ten years plus, yeah. should have one. Be a nice little Christmas present, yeah. you know, Bars, wouldn't yeah. it? Well, that to be fair, that is a good point. If you've been here, say ten years, you yeah. should be supplied with certain things. Yeah, it'd be just a nice, like, little, a nice little. You know, I've gone round it to this morning and greased it manually, but it's just time what wagons are on you. have got a little van to drive to work in. What more do you want? Well, yes, that's for carrying the GPS you equipment. Can put a, uh, you can put a little grease gun in the back of that, son. I've got, I have one in the machine. I have two in the machine if you want to look. Have you want to have a look? You don't believe me, do you? <laughs> no, it's a look. Are you calling me a liar? <laughs> Come on, that's one. Looking there. Has he even got grease this lad? Grease gun, shovel. Now then, now then. Right, right. This is very rare. This is very rare. I bet you've got that I bet you've got that out of my shop, haven't you? I haven't actually. Have you not? What are you doing with your shovel? You'll never use a shovel. It's for digging the tracks out. That's it, there you go, digging your tracks out. Yellow box. That's the radio for the GPS. That? Yeah. Yeah. You never use it? Yeah, it's on. Yeah. Set up on top of the cabin all the way. Yeah. Satellite comes down, gives you the signal. Yeah. Send it to this box and then sends it. Look at these little pods. Just to the pods, there. Uh, Trimble, two k Trimble. Send it to the pods at top, just through the radio touch screen. So you can't dig down any further than what that says, unless you bypass it. Is that right? No, oh, yeah, guy, I. I What's I have to dig, it's only a guide that. That's only a guide. Right, so you can go past. Yeah. Oh, you, I, I thought it stopped no, you from going no, past. No, 
you can set it that way I think right right but uh, yeah so if you got to a certain site you were told you was, if there were services underneath the ground yeah. you could set that to a level where it won't let you dig past yeah is that right yeah yeah I thought that's how it works oh, that's how it works anyway we're getting there uh, like I said I don't put an auto because uh, I'm a little bit too long in the tooth for stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're a decent you know I mean? one, Dave. We'll give it you. You're a decent yeah, one, lad. You're yeah. a decent What's one. What's that, though? It's just That's a mic so we can hear you. Oh, he'd laugh That's a mic so we can hear you, I'll tell you that. I thought it was something you pulled off end of your dog. <laughs> 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 right, enough, enough of you. Cheers, Dave, lad. Right. See you in a bit. I'll catch you later. See you in a bit. See you in two weeks when I've worn these teeth. Yeah, yeah, he does as well. Every, every six weeks we change teeth on this mom's bucket. So that were our Finchy boy there, Dave Finch, and uh, I thought we'll just uh, just take a step back there on what he just said about a grease gun because he's got a good point really. You know, if they all had them electric grease guns like us fitters have got, um, it would make uh, it would probably save a lot of money in the long run on uh, bushes and so forth on machines, and they keep the the tracks. Uh, pumped up to the right uh, tension uh, but I suppose if you was an employer that was supplying the guns then you'd have to seriously think about who gets one but in my opinion really I'd, uh, I'd go for the lads who've been here for a certain length of time and who have their own vans so certain machine drivers certain machine operators have uh, their own vans so yeah maybe I'll have a word with Foxy about that and and see where he stands on that score but I'm sure he won't want to supply well definitely won't want to supply grease guns to uh, all machines because they'll just go missing left right and centre won't they but if you've been here a certain length of time and uh, you've got your own van I think it makes sense and if you leave the company then uh, you leave the grease gun in the van don't you simple as that back to the workshop Right, so we just landed back at the yard, Luke's knocked some pins up. 40 mil and 25 mil. So you just can bang it all through them, split pin, yeah. Right, sound. And uh, are you right with piping it up, Luke? Yeah. Should be pretty straightforward, shouldn't it? Yeah, it would have thought so. Yeah. Right, sound. They're your ladders now as well. <laughs> Keep hold of them, I'll get some new ones. Right. They're out of my van. They're good ladders, then, though, but if you get a little dint in them or a bit of muck in them and stuff, it knackers them up, doesn't it? Nah, 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 nah. Are they? Yeah, bin them. Anything goes wrong with the ladders, bin them. Right, I'll leave you with that, bud. All right. So, if you look at this side director, that's the shape they should be. And Paul's just got it back on now. And the reason why they're so lightweight box these is because they are pulled over from the front end. So it's only the cables really that he's putting on now that's going to pull that over. That'll be right, that Paul, won't it? Uh, yeah, it should be. One more cable to go. Oh, yeah. Just tension it up there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like little turnbuckles on them to pull the wires to. Anyway, classic boot. Classic blues in here. Let's go and have a look at it. I don't know what it's in for. So for the viewers that haven't seen this Peter built before, this is Fox's, one of Fox's Pride and Joy trucks. And it's just coming in for a service and a few bits of work. Take a look at it when I'm looking inside the cab director. Proper bit of kit. So this does go to shows all around the UK. So I'll get a service today and uh, probably get a good wash. When I walk around.
Right, director, I've got loads of emails to go through, so that's enough for today. Yeah? You get yourself home and get that edited. All right, so these have just landed from one of our uh, bosses, Andy Duckett. And I don't even know what they are, but I'm sure a lot of you farming lads out there will know what they are. So basically what he wants us to do is take these rollers out there. See these rollers with the tubing. So I presume it just rolls onto topsoil this or something, right? And this one here, he wants us to fabricate two new ones of them to fit into that. So it's a pretty straightforward job thinking about it. So all it'll be will be a piece of tube, three metres long, whatever that is. Weld two end plates on it. Put a little shaft in there, connected to two bearings. And get a load of these profiled and weld them to the tube. Oh, and also make these here for uh, clearing it off clearing it off the uh, actual tube itself so yeah that will be a job for after Christmas but that's just come in now so let's take a look at workshop all the lads are out at the moment they're all out finishing jobs off on site I have a job to do on a crusher today uh, an old crusher that you might have seen before I'm not sure if it's been on a Chronicle yet or not but the actual toggle plate has come out of the crusher. These are just two archways for a walking floor trailer that have been damaged. This is one of the damaged ones. So as the sheet rolls over the top, you see how the bars get or catch. And there's one in, in there at the front and at the back of the trailer. Both of them are completely uh, shot at. So we're just making two new archways there. This little uh, plate I'm tapping out here. When I went to look at the crusher yesterday, one of these is missing. So this is actually uh, what locks, it locks in the toggle plate, as I'll show you on the Christmas special. So yeah, at the moment I'm just tapping this out to uh, 22 mil with this big tap wrench. Nice and straightforward, whenever you are tapping stuff, do one half turn, quarter turn back, half turn, quarter turn back, yeah. And use plenty of uh, cutting loop. Nice and straightforward. That's one all I've just tapped there. You can see nice and easy. So yeah, we have got a special guest coming today, who will be here very soon. This will be a, a short chapter, uh, as the Christmas special is about to start. So yeah, when our guest arrives, I'll let him finish this uh, this chapter. Hello guys, it's me the Struggler. That's the end of this week's chapter. If you want to see uh, why, how I got here with Mucky with Baz, <laughs> then tune in to the Christmas special! Yay! Hey Baz, bloody hey, good show. That's the one. <laughs>